Hello everyone, my name is Naren and in this session I am going to explain the system design or architecture for real-time messaging system or WhatsApp. This is a famous interview question asked by many companies like Amazon, Flipkart and many other startups. Before we dive into understanding of how the system design of WhatsApp works, let's get some basic understanding of uh, what are the components we need to uh, build a chatting application. Consider an ideal scenario where there are two clients, client A and client B. Now, if these two guys want to exchange some information, how do they want? How do they does? Client A knows the address of client B and client B also knows the address of A. So, the client A can send the information to client B and vice versa. And consider this is a small network. They know the address. What if this network is big? What if this network is internet? If it is internet, Consider there are billions of users which are using uh, this chatting application. In this scenario, it is very difficult to know the address of each and every client in the internet, right? That is not feasible scenario. To make the system robust and uh, high available, uh, what we need to do is bring something called a server in between, okay? This is server. The work of the server or, uh, or the job of the server is to coordinate messages between all the clients which are connected to this particular server. Consider I have also connected uh, one more client, one, one more client, two, three, four, right? If we want to send message to two, what it, do, what it does is it connects to the server, send a message and the server knows the address of the client two and it redirects the message to two. And similarly, if three wants to send message to two, this Client 3 sends a message to server and the server sends the message to client A. This is how this is what uh, this is how the system design for a real-time messaging system looks from thousand feet high. Now let's see the actual system design. Now let's discuss about the actual system design of WhatsApp. If you are uh, attending an interview and if the interviewee uh, interviewer asks you the question uh, like designs WhatsApp or design a real-time messaging platform, don't jump right into the question and start answering that I need this system, I need this component over here. Take, a, take some time, like take some minutes and then think about all the features you want to incorporate in your design uh, or in your application and start building around it. If you, if you are in confusion or if you have doubt, please free feel to ask your interviewer that do I need to support this particular feature or this particular feature or whatnot. So now let's do the same thing. Now for the WhatsApp which we are going to design in here, let's think of all the features which we want to support. The first one I can think of is, uh, the question I will really ask is what is the scale at which the application works or what is your user base? User base is really important. Um, User base. User base is really important to understand how big uh, the how many users are actually is going to interact with your application. That means that uh, the design drastically changes. The design for real time messaging. If we have a couple of users versus the design, if we have billions of users, is very different. Okay. The second feature which I am going to think now is: uh, Do we really need? Do we need a feature like? last seen time of a particular person like last seen okay you would have seen that a person was seen last three hours ago or something like that do we need that feature the next thing which i can think of is uh, do we need uh, support to send media messages when i say media the messages like images or audio etc so do we need to support these kind of messages or oh, and the next thing i can think of is do we need to encrypt our messages? Encrypt. Yes. Security is a lot important. To keep our messages secure, we need to encrypt our SMS. Sorry, the messages. So the next thing which I can think of is, do we need to support VoIP or telephony services? That is, telephony. Like audio call or video call. So having said that, thinking all these features, Let's go ahead and design um, the system for WhatsApp. Consider we have two parties, that is client A 
and client B. Now, as I already mentioned, we need a server in between uh, these clients to establish a connection and to send the messages back and forth. Now, let's write a server. And let's name this server card as messaging server. Now, look at the feature, user base. When we know that our user base is, will be in terms of billions of users, then definitely one messaging server will can't, can't withstand the load. So now that said, we need multiple messaging server. As you know, when we have multiple messaging server, it is horizontally distributed or horizontally scaled or distributed servers, right? These are the clusters of server. In this case, the clients can't connect to uh, the messaging server randomly. That's when the load balancer comes in between. We need a load balancer. load balancer. So when we have load balancer, what happens is when the client A tries to connect to the messaging server, the client A, client a or client B or any other clients hits first the load balancer and the load balancer will decide which server to connect based on different parameters like load on the server or the session which the client is uh, earlier connected to and different parameters. The same thing happens even when the client B tries to connect, it first hits the load balancer and the load balancer will offload the request or redirect the request to any one of the server. Okay, now let's talk about what kind of connection, okay, before we talk about connection, we need one more component that is DB. We need DB to save some arbitrary status, uh, arbitrary states. Okay, the messaging servers will talk to DB. Uh, to retrieve some states or to save some states or to save messages in certain conditions. Let's talk about how the connection works. The connection over here is called as duplex connection. What do you mean by duplex? Duplex connections mean bidirectional. When the connection established from the client um, A to messaging server, either the, the messages can be originated in the client and flows to the messaging server or vice versa. The messages might originate from the messaging server and flows to B uh, or client A or client B. That means the messages can be originated on any other ends of the connection and can send to and forth. That is called as duplex connection. And what are the different kind of connection we can establish? There are different kind of connections like TCP connection, UDP connection, or you can think of WebSocket or long polling. There are different kind of connection. The most common way of connection uh, happens via uh, simply TCP connection, where a, a socket is, um, or the connection is established from the client to server. So now, let's take some scenario and see how the message flows in the system. Consider client A wants to send a message to client B. What happens now is client A has the message. Now, if the client A, a didn't uh, consider the client A is not connected to the system as of now, now what happens? Now the client A, a has the message and this message will be saved in the local database of your application. That is in Android, say SQLite, in iPhone, maybe SQLite or any other lightweight database uh, which is used by iPhone. The message will, be, will stay right in your mobile and as soon as the client connects to the messaging server, the connection establishes and this message will be pushed to the messaging server. Once the message server receives this message, what it does is it, it checks for the um, connection, checks, looks for the connection or the process which is responsible uh, to send the message to client B and hands, it, hands this message over to that particular process and that message will be sent to client B. For some reason, if client B is not connected to the internet or to the messaging server, what happens to this message? This message will be saved into the DB. Okay? And then as soon as the messaging server learns that the client B has connected back to the messaging server, it retrieves a message from the DB and then sends the message uh, to client B using the connection which is established. In all these scenarios, 
the clients are the one who establish the connection. Not the server will never try to establish connection themselves to the client because the server will never know the address of the client. But the client know the address of the server. That is the reason always the client starts the connection. And once the connection is established, anyone can uh, send a message at any point of the time. So this is how the messaging works. Now let's talk about the acknowledgements, the message acknowledgement. In case of all the last seen features and everything. So in case of WhatsApp, you would have seen that whenever you send an SMS, you will see one tick. Whenever the message is delivered, you will see two ticks. Whenever the message is read, you will see blue tick. How do, how, how do this, these things work? Let's go back to the same scenario. The client A wants to send a message to client B. When the client A sends a message, the message originates from here and the message reaches to message server. As soon as the messaging server receives the message, the message server sends one in, uh, sends an information to client A saying that I have received your message successfully. That's when client A displays the signal tick that the message has been received in the server end. That server. The message has reached the server. Once the message server finds the appropriate connection of, to the client B, the message will be sent to the client B. That's when client B sends a response to the messaging server that I have successfully received the message. That's when you will see two ticks that message delivered. message deliver and then once the user opens WhatsApp or any other uh, chatting application and read the message that's when the client sends one more message to the messaging server that the particular message has been read and the message server in turn transfers back that message to the client A saying that the message you sent has been read that's when the client will show that the blue color take that message has been done. Right. Okay. This is how the acknowledgement works. In all the case, there will be a unique ID used for a message to identify what acknowledgements are responsible for what particular message. Okay. So let's discuss uh, the messaging server in depth. So I, I, I was always uh, keep on telling that the message server will find a connection and sends the message to the client B. Let's discuss how exactly this messaging server works. Now I have written a big box. Let's call this as messaging server. So how this messaging server functions internally. So every time when, when a connection is established from a client to the server, there will be a respective process, I write the process in black color, a process or thread will be created um, and that thread which is long running is responsible for handling messages for this particular connection. Consider the client A has established a connection. So there is a thread or a process which is created inside the messaging server and that will be always um, responsible to handle any messages transferring or uh, acquire, you know, uh, receiving the acknowledgement and other stuff. This guy will handle everything and there will be a PID or thread ID or something like that. And there will be a respective queue associated with every thread or a process. What this queue does is, it is a buffer where the messages can be sent by any other different processes. Now, let's take a hypothetical scenario that there is one more connection happen from client B. As soon as the connection establishes, we need to create, create a thread or a process to handle the messages to this particular client. And there will be a pipe or a queue which is also created, which saves the messages or which acts as a buffer for the messages. Now take a scenario, uh, ah, okay, after all, doing all these things, we will add an entry and this will also have a PID, we will add an entry in the DB that 
what is the process PID, say PID X and then respective Q, Q name or QID or something you can say, think of. Or, or yeah, sorry. It is called as device ID. Or I can, I can simply mention it as UID or user ID. The process, let's create a table called PID and UID. What it happens is when the connection happens, there will be a process created for client A and it has a process ID. Say, consider the process ID is 1 and which is associated with client A. And there will be one more when, when the connection happens from client B, one more process is created and consider the process PID 2. For the PID, the UID is B. Now, what happens is, consider A wants to send a message. A sent a message. Um, yes, I'll write the message in a different color. Consider A sent a message and this message goes and straight, um, this message will be received by the process of ID 1. Okay? How does it know? Because the connection is already established and this particular process or thread is keep on listening to the connection and it receives the message as and when the client A is sent. It will take this message and queries the DB, give me the process ID which, uh, is, respond, which is responsible to handle the messages uh, for client B because this message is destined for client B, sent by client A. It searches in the table and finds that the client B is handled by a process called 2 with a PID 2. Now what this process with the PID 1 does is sends this message to the queue which is responsible for handling client B. This message goes and sits inside the queue of uh, the process PID 2. Now what this process does is it keeps on looking at the queue as and when a message arrives to the queue it reads that message and sends through the connection which it has already established. So the message reaches to client B. Okay? And the same thing happens back and forth when the message sent by the client B, the, this process finds the UID of the client which is responsible for client A and sends the message to the queue which is responsible for that and then the message will go back to the client A. Okay? This is how the system work. You can ask that what if the client B is not connected to the messaging server? If the client B is not connected to the messaging server, there will not be any server or any process or thread which is responsible to handle the client B. Okay? Then this entry will not also be there. So then consider now what if A wants to send a message to client B? Now A knows uh, that I need, send, I need to send a message to client B, it sends a message to client B and this message is arrived here, destined to B. Now this particular process searches for, searches in the table, which process is responsible to handle client B. It will never find, it will never find a process which is responsible. That's when it learns that the client B is not connected to the system at all. What it does is, it takes this message and saves it in one more DB, or well, actually this DB, in a table which has UID versus message. So it saves all the messages which are which could which it couldn't deliver to the client, and it will be there. And when the client B connects to the system, a new process will be created with a PID say three, and as soon as it creates, uh, as soon as the process is created, when the connection is established, it will update its entry that my PID is 3 and I am responsible to handle message for client B. And also what it does is, it looks at the DB, do we have any unread or unsent messages? Exactly, it will find a message here and it will read and it will start sending the message to client B. Okay, this is how it functions when client B was offline and came online. Now you have learned how messaging server works, let's discuss how to implement other features which we uh, have mentioned over here. Okay, now let's retain this design just the way it was 
and then let's discuss how to implement the last scene last scene uh, time how to how to implement it so uh, what do we need here how, how do we know that when uh, client EA or client B was last seen it's very simple all we need is a heartbeat or a last seen heartbeat which will be always sent by the client and we should be keep on saving in the table consider uh, consider we have a table which has say user ID and timestamp okay what it's what, what is the information we are going to save is consider this client A is configured to send a heartbeat every 5 minutes once if the user is actively using the application only what it happens is when the user is using the application every 5 second once the client A is keep on sending a heartbeat saying that the application is being used by the user as and when the heartbeat is received in the messaging server the messaging server keeps on adding the entry in the table shown here when A sends a heartbeat it will update A and the last scene timestamp like epoch time or, the, or whatever time say updated say uh, 2018 7 whatever 7 and then whatever the time okay when the next message after immediately after 5 seconds one more heartbeat keeps on sending to the messaging server and that will, this, this particular timestamp will be always updated okay as soon as the user closes the application the heartbeat will be stopped and the last entry was made will retain in the table if someone else some of the clients want to know what was the time at which the uh, client A was last seen we can always read from this table and display that one hour ago, two hour ago, or ten days ago, or twenty days ago. That's it. So let's discuss how do we support the third feature, media. So we are we are all sent a voice note or pictures via our WhatsApp, right? How do we do that? We are not going to use the same connection to send the pictures or voice because the connection is kind of lightweight. I think it's not that good. Let's use HTTP um, to uh, support this particular feature. Now let's draw one more component to the existing system design. That is HTTP server. HTTP server. What it does is it is going to handle all the media content. HTTP server also should be having some kind of CDN or some kind of DV which saves all this information. Okay. What it does is whenever we try to upload an image, what client A does is it is not going to use the existing connection with the messaging server. It is going to upload that image directly to the HTTP server. Once that image is uploaded to the HTTP server, this server is going to return the hash or unique ID for that particular resource which we just uploaded. It might be an image or it could be an audio or something. We get the hash back to the client A. What we are going to send to client B is just the hash and the type of media information only. The message will contain the hash and the media type, it could be image or audio. And this message will be sent to client B. When the message is received on the client B, the client B is going to use the hash and downloads the media from the same HTTP server or CDN network. That's it. It works for the video, I mean, it works the same way for video, it works the same way for audio, it works the same way for image. Now let's talk about our fourth feature how encryption work the encryption can be of two kind right you can have one key which is shared between two parties and both the parties use the same key to encrypt the message and uh, send the message to the other party and back and forth when the message is received use the same key and decrypt this is a simple way or the other way is you have a private key and a public key you're going to share a public key to the other party or any other parties and you will keep always keep the private key. Uh, this is called as asymmetric encryption and this can also be used. Um, okay. 
Um, so let's let's not talk about telephony services. For that, we had to uh, include all the um, you know VoIP servers or uh, the chat, the video calling servers and all. Like let's keep the design simple. Let's not support this particular feature. And uh, and here it is. This is the system design for WhatsApp. Okay. So now that we learned the system design for real-time messaging platform or WhatsApp, uh, I'm going to explain you what are the technologies uh, WhatsApp in uh, real users. So the language uh, used by WhatsApp is Erlang for a uh, few reasons. Um, Erlang is uh, pretty fast and uh, really good in performance and it also supports like hot upload or you can you can think of uh, it as updating the code on the fly um, and also it supports uh, something like lightweight thread and which is a uh, ideal case where we want to have millions of connections established um, in, in a, a persistent connection established to your servers. Uh, WhatsApp guys have managed to uh, handle about uh, 10 million connections in a single messaging server that's really great and, and it's something which is highly impossible only if you know the system in and out and if you can tweak your kernel of uh, the server and networking libraries etc maybe you can achieve but it's uh, it's a really great job done by whatsapp developers um, and the operating system used in the uh, messaging server is uh, freebsd the reason behind FreeBSD is uh, simple like the developers knew FreeBSD in and out so that they can uh, get the maximum benefit out of it. So they did, they did go for FreeBSD. Apart from that, the DB which they used is Amnesia which works really great with Erlang. Um, it is also a key value pair based database. Um, yeah, I think the web server which they use for uh, handling the connection and everything is uh, YAWS, that is yet another web server. Um, I think that's about it. I have left all the links which uh, I used to learn uh, the system design of WhatsApp uh, in the description. If you like this video, please do subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you everyone.